This video is sponsored by Masca Products. This tool is called the Viking Arm. This may be one of the most versatile hand tools you can actually have in your workshop or on your work site. There's so much you can do with this tool from windows and doors, decking, lifting furniture, installing cabinets. The options are almost endless. Let me show you what this tool can do and maybe you can use one in your shop or on your work site. How you doing? I'm Matt with 731woodworks.com. Today, I'm gonna to be reviewing the Viking Arm, telling you what all uses I found that you can use it for. If you know of more uses, drop them in the comments below to let me know as well as others so that they get value out of this as well. Now you see I have three Viking Arms in front of me, two black versions, one red version. This is a special edition red. You're gonna want this. Details later in the video on how to win this absolutely fantastically beautiful awesome Viking arm in red. For the review, I'll be using these two black ones so that the red one doesn't get scratched, scuffed, or otherwise dinged so that you get a pristine tool. Let's do it. Before I get into this, showing you the examples of everything this can do, let me tell you about the tool itself. It's very important. So as you can see, this thing is made of all metal construction. There's no plastic on this thing. It's all stainless or aluminum construction. It has this wide base for stability, three forks on the bottom, two on the top. They actually have a beveled edge so that you can slip it into tight spaces or underneath some decking or flooring or things like that. Not only can you lift 330 pounds with a Viking arm, this left button, there's two buttons. One will take it all the way back down, but the one on the left will actually let you incrementally lower the Viking arm. So the Viking arm is actually a handheld jack that has a 330 pound lift capacity. It can lift 330 pounds or 150 kilograms if you're into that kind of thing. This is a very solid tool. There's no plastic on this. This is high quality. You can feel it as soon as you touch it, grab it, pick it up out of the box. You know you're holding a quality piece of material. This is gonna last you a very long time and it's gonna take the place of multiple tools. This thing can do so much in the workshop and help you out. It's basically like having another set of hands. When you have a large piece of plywood or something you're trying to hold up and get in position to get that screw in or to get it joined together or to get it attached to something, this can help you. So I want you to see exactly how small of an adjustment you can actually make with the Viking arm. So a full pull on the trigger will move it about five sixteenths of an inch. Coming down, you can just, you can micro adjust it. I'm just guessing a 64th at a time, maybe even less. Going up's the same way. I can just barely squeeze and move that. If you can just see it moving against the marks. So if you're trying to get something level or square uh, or mounted at a specific spot, this tool right here is what you need. So if you wanna know the overall footprint of the Viking arm, it is 15 and a quarter inches tall. The foot on it is three and a half by four inches. Deep, it's about eight and maybe a eighth inch, maybe a quarter from the front of the foot to the back of the lever arm. So as you can see with the three millimeter plate on there, it makes the footprint of this thing so much smaller compared to what it was. So this one is, the plate that comes with the Viking arm is thicker, but it also is deeper and wider. It's a much more, uh, it takes up a lot more room. So if you need to get it in tight spaces or get this into something, uh, squeezed in between something, then this plate is the one you would want to also pick up. Uh, it, again, it doesn't come with the Viking arm, but it is an add-on you can get if you need it in tight spaces or you don't want it sticking out uh, as far. So like flooring and different things like that. Very easy to change out with that hex screws you saw. Hey, if you like these type of videos, click that subscribe button, click the bell icon next to it so you get notified of all my new content. So I'll put links in the description below to these tools if you wanna check them out for yourself. The first thing that comes to mind when I think about this type tool, it's a lifter or spreader type tool. It's, it's basically a jack, it's a handheld jack but it has this precision button on the back so that you can use it to level things. So if you're hanging a cabinet or something like that, this precision will let you get down until it's perfectly level. So having two of these would be extremely handy so that you can have one on each side and you can raise. So if I needed to raise this up to meet a certain level for hanging cabinetry or doors or anything like that, we can just creep up on that level. Then if you go too far, 
All you have to do is push this left button just a little bit and it's gonna start lowering that side back down just a little bit until you get it perfect. So one very awesome use for this tool is if you're building furniture and you need something to hold it in place but still be able to adjust, that's what these are gonna come in handy because, so you know, if you have a stop block under here or you've got something that you've, you've, played, you've cut to size here, and you can't adjust that if you needed to adjust for a rail or something like that. And so that's where these come in handy. So if, you want, if you're trying to mark for a mortise and tenon or even pocket hole joinery or a dowel joinery, anything like that, and you need to mark these to be exact and you want to lay them out this way, especially if you've already got like a frame built so you can't lay it down or, so you could actually use this to incrementally raise and lower this into place where you can make your marks. This is my miter stand. And so I actually have under the, because of my garage floor is so terribly out of level. So underneath you can see I have adjustable feet. I have those on all four corners of each side. The way I had to adjust these was before I had the Viking arm was I actually took a, a board and just made it, pried it up and shim it up and shim it up until I actually didn't have to go look at the level on top. So now I can just take the Viking arm and raise it up if I need to. Then I can just reach in and adjust the bolt and then I can let it down easily back into place. That is so cool. So with a 330 pound lifting capacity, any of you that do demo know how frustrating it can be when you have two boards that you're trying to demo, you can't get this uh, nail or this pry bar in there good enough to actually get enough force on it to break it apart. I've screwed these two boards together. I've got the Viking R jammed in there now. And all you have to do is just start cranking on it. And at 330 pounds of pressure, we should be able to pry it right off. No problem. Look at that. Just broke it right off of there. And it had probably a good, what, inch and so of a screw sticking into the board. So it's a really good demo tool also. So if you have a workbench that has some bench dogs in it, you can actually use this to uh, say clamp two pieces of boards together. If you're, if you're, for whatever reason, want to use this instead of clamps or just to push them together, this will do the same thing. So now I've got those two in place. I could work on those, do whatever I needed to right there. Another use for these is a lot of people who lay flooring need to, if we pretend this is the wall and you're laying that floor and they need a little gap there, they, get, they also can use these to uh, put a little tension and press this board up against the ones that they've already laid, whether that be some type of laminate or other type of flooring, hardwood flooring. They can use this to, against the wall to push that flooring tight, make that seam tight, and then they can install the flooring that way. My workbench is actually pretty heavy. You can see that with this toolbox is full of all types of metal wrenches and things. And so if I had to adjust this for any reason, I just wanna show you how powerful these things are because this workbench is actually really heavy. I mean, I have, I have a pretty, uh, I have some difficulty picking it up actually because it is quite heavy. If I needed to put adjustable feet on here or raise this up for any reason so that I could get something underneath it, you just take these one in each hand and just, it's so easy. It just glides so smooth. I mean, I, I mean, how high can it go? You know, it's really powerful. I mean, I'm just, I'm not having to strain to squeeze these together or anything. I mean, this it's actually really, really powerful. And then we can just let them down incrementally. You can do this really smooth. As you can see, I'm barely pushing on that a thumb. And on this side, I can do the same thing. Or if we want to live on the dangerous side, we hit that right uh, button, take it all the way to the ground. So one of the cool things is it's not only a jack or a spreader, uh, it also can be a clamp. All you have to do is take off this little uh, stop screw. Don't lose it, it's small, you can lose it easily. Now one hard lesson I just learned is when you take this off, make sure to keep pressure on this piece because it is spring loaded, it will come off of there. So I put pressure that way into the arm if you put pressure on it, it's not going anywhere. Just hold it tight with your thumb, flip it around, and then you can just push it right in there and you can release the pressure, put the stop screw back in, but then you have a clamp. And it acts like just like any other clamp. Ah, I did it again. 
So if you wanted to adjust the height of any type of heavy tool, this thing weighs 75, 80 pounds or so. I mean, it's a pretty hefty little tool. And uh, so if I needed to raise that up for whatever reason to shim it, a uh, perfect tool for that, we can just do that. So if you're a woodworker, a roofer, uh, you put up sheetrock or drywall, whatever you call it, anything like that where these large pieces are really bulky, sometimes heavy in the case of plywood, it's hard to adjust those things to get them level, whether we're putting that on the wall, on a piece of furniture, whatever you're building, this thing is perfect for that because you can just, so easy, I can do it with two fingers. I could probably do it with one. <laughs> one finger, y'all. Just easy adjustment, I mean this thing, it's like you can one finger adjust, doesn't matter which way you're doing it, up or down. You need one of these. So with the cost of lumber being extremely high right now, a lot of people are turning to pallets for pallet wood projects and that's awesome. Now you gotta break these things down and the Viking arm. I don't know if this is gonna work. I just assume it will. It's got so much strength to it. I'm gonna check it out and see if we can break this pallet apart using the Viking arm. Boom, so that pulled all those nails out of that right there. And then we can just let it go. Come down here and get another bite. Oh, easy, easy, easy. Check that out. That is super simple now. All you would have to do is drive those nails back out with a hammer and then you'll have a perfectly usable board. This was already broke when it came here, so just FYI. So obviously if, you, if a piece of the board has already got some gap under it, you can just use this. Man, it is so easy to pull that out of there. However, if one doesn't have a gap, then you're gonna have to create a gap, obviously, and just a simple pry bar should work. Easy, easy, easy. My idea would be, <laughs> oh man. Y'all, if you're breaking down pallets, get you one of these. As a friend of mine says, put a cape on that, call it super easy. If you saw my deck makeover build the other day, this Viking arm would have come in so handy out here to actually help me to keep the level of these bottom rail of the handrails actually level while I drove that screw in from the top because having this support underneath would have prevented it from actually getting pushed down by the screw. Also, one awesome use would be you could actually use this to set a distance between two boards. So like when I was putting these handrails on, I could have just set this at this distance that I wanted. And then every time, instead of having a block that I had to keep up and down, up and down that I was fumbling with, I could actually just set this in there and then screw the board in. And then this would actually act as a spacer that you can adjust incrementally up to like a 64th. Like it barely moves when you squeeze this. So you can actually use this as a precision spacer. So that's a really cool use for that as well. And while we're on the deck, you know that when you're laying decking, especially when you get close to the house, you sometimes need to push that deck board away from the house or to keep that equal spacing as you're moving along. You could actually use this Viking arm for the same purpose. Get it in there and just start spreading and use that to actually move the deck boards into position before you screw them down. Perfect use for decks. Now, one thing that I have kind of thought of, if you're in a bind, you can actually use it as a caulking gun. You just take a piece of scrap wood to be able to push up in there. You can see I've already got some caulking running out there. So very simple, easy to use, just to kind of another extra use for it if you don't have a caulking gun. Oh, if I didn't mention, this is clamp mode. So I brought the Viking arm in the kitchen to show you something. Miss 731, look away, look away. If you've ever tried to adjust the feet to get an appliance level like a stove or refrigerator, you know how hard it can be by yourself. With a Viking arm, you simply slip it under there and, I got much clearance I got up there. You can raise it up and adjust the feet. You can also do the same thing on stoves, dishwashers, washers and dryers, anything that's washers, washers and dryers, anything that's, that's gonna be on level and you need to level up. You know how it is when you have to pick that thing up and reach under there and adjust it with a Viking arm. You just simply jack it up to the spot you need it and adjust the feet down so that it's level. If you've ever tried to hang a door, you know that it's very difficult to do by yourself to get everything lined up, to get a screw in there to where the hinge needs to be lined up perfectly. That's where you can use a Viking arm or two, actually, because you can keep it level as it goes up. Now you can see with the Viking arm, I've got those lined up perfect and I don't even have to hold the door. It'll sit right there and stay lined up and I can go ahead and attach it. So let's hope that the Viking arm allow this door to be hung properly.
If your spouse likes to move around furniture a lot and you're always having to pick it up to put sliders under it, Viking Arm to the rescue, you can easily pick it up just like that. Take your carpet slider, slide it under it. No heavy lifting. Another demo use, I'm not gonna do it, but if you're demoing sinks, you know that a lot of times that caulking under there can get really stuck, hard to get out of there. If you could pry it up a little bit, get your Viking arm underneath the sink, and then it would just actually just pry it right up. So a lot of you know I like to lift weights, and I've got a little home gym set up in here, and I wanna know how much these can lift. How much you lift, bro? That's a 45 pound power bar. Two plates on each side makes uh, 225. These are 45 pound plates. Makes 315 if I got three on each side. So to me, this is one of the better ways to figure out what it acts like under load. Two before. Don't try this at home. So this is 315. So 315, it's easily, I mean, I'm barely putting any uh, pressure squeezing it up. It's rated for 330 pounds. This is 315. Lower it back down, slowly, slowly. Lowers down with ease. I mean, even under load, they, they operate well. This is 405. So it's still picking it up easy. I, I do have to put a little more pressure uh, on the clamp itself or on the lever arms, lever arms to get them to move. Letting it back down with ease. So this is about 495, give or take a pound or two. We'll see what the Viking arms can do with that. So much the same as 405. It doesn't have any problems lifting that up and holding the weight. So that's 495 pounds total that the Viking arms are holding up five plates on each side. And the only reason I'm not raising it higher is because I'm out of room here. I'm maxed out on the, the Viking arm height. I could put another board on there, but I don't want to make it unstable. Lowering 495. No problem. That's 595. Those are 10 pounders. Two of those. 665 pounds, give or take a pound or two. I wanna see how much struggle this thing is really gonna have. Ready? So I'm having to squeeze it. And I'm having to squeeze it pretty good. It's off the ground. Six, oh, it's falling, it's falling, it's falling. 665 like a boss, no problem. Now I did have to squeeze a little harder, but it's off the ground probably an inch and a half. If I wanted to let down 665 pounds, it don't want to do that. It don't like that at all. That's right, this one here in, on your left will do that. I'm letting it down. You can see that, and then the other one's gonna roll off. <laughs> so not bad, not bad. So right after the 665 pound load, you can see everything works like it's supposed to. Don't try that at home. I just wanted to see how they would operate under a very heavy load. I lifted that 665 pounds for demonstration purposes only. To avoid damaging your Viking arm in any way, do not overload it. The max capacity for one Viking arm is 330 pounds. Keep that in mind. Don't overload it. It could damage the tool and it could be unsafe. Don't do that to your tool. It could damage it. Also avoid the warranty. Now, what do I not like about this? Not a whole lot, but there is a couple of things. I know that there's gotta be a way to stop this from coming off the end. This little set screw is so tiny. This thing is so tiny. I'm scared that I'm actually gonna, if you drop that on a work site, I can see that being gone forever. And I can actually see that it would maybe vibrate out of there at some point if it was in a work truck, something like that. So I think a better use would be some type of carter key thing that would stick through there so that it would prevent this from sliding off the end, but also wouldn't come out as easy. It wouldn't be as easy to lose. The only other thing I don't like is when you remove this piece, if you're not careful and holding this pressure on this piece here, this metal, this silver piece, pushing that way, when you pull, that clamp out of there. If you let pressure off because that is spring loaded, I'm gonna do it slowly so you can see it folds right out of there. And when it comes out, it takes a little bit of finesse to get everything put back together. And to put it back together, you just basically, you're gonna put that spring in between these two little metal clips, put the spring back down on there and just push it back into place as best you can. Kind of hold everything snug and in place. 
Uh, you'll actually have to push Whoa! Case in point why I don't like that design part of it. You saw that spring just shoot out of there. You actually have to push both of those triggers back up in there. Once everything's back in place, just hold it snug. Then it's back on there. It'll work just like it's supposed to. Put your set screw back in there. There you got it. Those are the only two things about this whole tool that I don't really care for. I really don't see myself using this in clamp mode. I have a few clamps back there thanks to a very generous donor to the channel. So the only thing else I would add to this is not really this tool itself, but maybe a XL version or a 731 version. Maybe it could pick up 731 pounds. So if it was a bigger version, I would like to see so a bigger feet on the bottom, maybe bigger forks here so that it holds bigger material like four by fours or something like that. And then a taller, uh, be taller as well. So really that's just be, to have an extra model like an XL version would be nice. There have been a large amount of fake ads around the internet surfacing for the Viking arm. These are scammers and not advertisers for the Viking arm. They're trying to sell them for 20 to $50 on Facebook, Instagram, Amazon, etc. And then they'll, what they'll do is they'll have you go to their website, make that purchase, and then you'll never actually get the product. You want to avoid that scam, let me tell you how. So the real Viking arm is made in Norway from all aluminum and stainless steel construction. Patent in Europe and is pending, patent pending in the United States. It has been extensively tested by FinTech out of Norway. As of today, in early May 2021, Masca products and their authorized retailers are the only authorized sellers of the Viking Arm located in the United States. There are others internationally, but not in the United States. If you want to be certain you're buying the right one, check the link in the description below to take you to the correct website. That way you don't get scammed, you get the real Viking arm. If you're unfamiliar with Masca products, I highly encourage you to go check out their website. A great group of people, small family owned business. Uh, Mr. Addo started this in his garage and I can respect that because that's what I'm doing working out of my garage too. He started in 2016. Uh, they got a, they're very community oriented in their mission and they're just a great group of people to work with. It's been a true blessing for 731 Works to be able to work with a company like Masca products. Very friendly very, very customer oriented. I highly recommend you check them out. Link in the description below. As you can see, I've covered dozens of uses for the Viking arm and I probably just scratched the surface. This is what I could think of uh, at, while I was reviewing it and what I thought about over the last couple of days, thinking about how I could use the Viking arm. There's so many uses for this thing. You need one in your shop, you need one in your work truck. If you want to find out more information, there's a link in the description below where you can go check these out for yourself. On the fist bump scale, we're gonna give this a 4.5 out of five. I like it. I think it's a solid tool. I don't think you'll be disappointed with it in any way. I almost hit myself in the face with that. If you want to win this red edition, special edition red, this thing looks sweet. If you wanna win this, link in the description below to gleam.io. Click that link, it's gonna take you over there. You can enter to win this Viking arm. Hey, if you like this video, click that box right there. It's gonna take you to the next set of videos. Click on that box, you get that big old virtual fist bump. Also, if you haven't subscribed already, remember to click that subscribe button, bell icon right next to it so you get notified of all of our new content. We've got a lot coming.